Another day, another war movie. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ames. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. Hit the like. Let's get into this thing. Roll tape, baby. Whoa, is that the sound of a helicopter? Oh, I have a feeling that the sound editing in this and the sound design is gonna be crazy. Whoa. Wow. Oh my gosh. Does this have like one of the best soundtracks or something? Am I gonna have to listen to it after? That drowned helicopter noise is also kind of terrifying. Is he like remembering this? I really like these visuals. This is like a really powerful opening. That sound is so crazy. Oh no. Oh, he's back at home. Saigon. Oh no. Shit. <laughs> I'm still only in Saigon. I freaking love movies that have narration on top. Every time I think I'm gonna wake up back in the jungle. When I was home after my first tour, it was worse. We're gonna see into like the deep psychological side of things, aren't we? Is he gonna be remembering back? I'd wake up and there'd be nothing. I hardly said a word to my wife until I said yes to a divorce. When I was here, I wanted to be there. All I could think of was getting back into the jungle. Oh my gosh, yeah, such a heavy toll on your heart, man. I'm here a week now, waiting for a mission, getting softer. <sighs> getting softer, because you're out in the world. Each time I looked around, the walls moved in a little tighter. He looks really like on something. Oh my gosh, he's bleeding. Oh no. Oh, oh, he's in a bad state of mind. <gasps> oh, I haven't seen Martin Sheen in a lot of stuff at all. But wow, that scene was really powerful. I wanted a mission and for my sins, they gave me one. Captain Willard, are you in there? It was a real choice mission. I'd never want another. You have orders to report to ComSec Intelligence. Oh. He's gotta go back in. <gasps> oh geez, that's gonna wake you up. Oh my gosh. I was going to the worst place in the world and I didn't even know it yet. Hundreds of miles up a river lugged straight into Kurtz. There is no way to tell his story without telling my own. <gasps> Harrison Ford is in this too. You worked a lot on your own, haven't you, Captain? Yes, sir, I have. That's what's probably why things are so hard for him. He's been alone a lot in war. What would that do to you psychologically, man? Did you not assassinate a government tax collector? I'm unaware of any such activity or operation. Oh, he's sweating. That's probably because he's like really hungover and it's hot there. <laughs> That's that senator, right, from The Godfather? That hand there, you wounded? That little fishing accident. Oh, you liar. From smashing a frickin' mirror. Couldn't look at yourself. A lot of directors tend to use the same actors, right? So it looks like Francis Ford Coppola is one of those guys. You've heard of Colonel Walter E. Kurtz? Yes, sir. Crawl along the edge. Uh, straight razor. That's my dream. Crawling. Slipping. Why do you have to talk about that and then show the shrimp? <laughs> and they call me an assassin. Oh. Is he equally going crazy? They lie and we have to be merciful. Those who lie. He just wants to kill everybody. Walt Kurtz was one of the most outstanding officers this country's ever produced. And now he's turning to the dark side. <laughs> now he's crossed into Cambodia with this Montagnard army of his that worship the man like a god. Oh, he has like a small little cult regime that's following him. Well, you see, Willard, in this war, things get confused out there. Because there's a conflict in every human heart between the rational and the irrational, between good and evil. And good does not always triumph. Dark side, and very obviously he has gone insane. <laughs> He's like, so am I. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good job to send me on. Obviously insane. You find the colonel infiltrate his team by <clears throat> whatever means available and terminate the colonel's command. <sighs> How is this going to sit on him? Because isn't he going to relate to him? He's out there operating without any acceptable human conduct. 
I guess that's why they have to take him out, because he thinks he's God. This mission does not exist, nor will it ever exist. Seems like it's a bit of a hard one for them to send him into, no? Like, because he seemed like he was a good guy, he was a humanitarian, and now war has just changed him and sent him into the darkness, and now they have to terminate him because of his choices. And now he has to go in, and he's like also fighting the dark side, so this is gonna be really interesting. How many people had I already killed? Close enough to blow their last breath in my face. But this time, it was an American. Yeah. You have to kill one of your own. Wow, it's got some beautiful, beautiful cinematography here. Beautiful god rays coming down. That wasn't supposed to make any difference to me, but it did. Yeah. Charging a man with murder in this place was like handing out speeding tickets. <laughs> exactly. It's a really good analogy for it. I took the mission. What the hell else was I going to do? But I really didn't know what I'd do when I found him. I just feel like he's going to relate to him. Not that he thinks he's God or anything. Just having this like connection with the futility of war and stuff, you know? A type of plastic patrol boat. They said it was a good way to pick up information. I needed the air and the time. Only problem was I wouldn't be alone. He likes being alone. That's what he's used to. Rock and rollers with one foot in their graves. How old are you? The one they called Chef was from New Orleans. He was wrapped too tight for Vietnam. <laughs> He's tanning. He was a famous surfer. Mr. Clean was from some South Bronx shithole. Then there was Phillips, the chief. It might have been my mission, but it sure as shit was the chief's boat. I don't really know much about the Vietnam War, but like people didn't really think that the U.S. shouldn't have gone in. I'm Army Specialist Zach Johnson on AM. Like this. He is so young. Oh, he's water skiing. I've never been to Vietnam, but I've been to Thailand. Talking about like the sunset and sunrise, seeing it in this film, but like in Thailand, it was absolutely amazing. At first, I thought they handed me the wrong dossier. I couldn't believe they wanted this man dead. It was a crazy resume. Heard his voice on the tape and it really put the hook in me. But I couldn't connect up that voice with this man. Damages your psyche, man. During the next few months, he made three requests for transfer to Airborne. He was 38 years old. Why the fuck would he do that? I was gonna say, is that like too old <laughs> to go to the Airborne? 1966, returns Vietnam. Hey, what's that? Arc light. That was such a cool shot. Every time I hear that, something terrible happens. Huey's over there. Lots of Huey's. But they were supposed to be waiting for us another 30 kilometers ahead. Oh, poor kid. Oh, that's so sad. First of the ninth was an old cavalry division, and it cashed in its horses for choppers and gone tear-assing around Nam looking for the shit. Whoa. That, like, boat tank. What are those called, guys? Like, that is wild. <gasps> yeah, an hour ago. Oh, my gosh. Boat tank. <laughs> Just taking everything down. Is that like some sort of journalist that's like reporting? We're all over the tanks, so I like it. Captain Willard! Oh, that's Duval. Sir, your unit's supposed to escort us into the oh, nun! Uh, well, we'll see what we can do, but uh, just stay out of my way till this is done, Captain. I think I have a really big crush on Robert Duval. <laughs> He's phenomenal. <gasps> oh. oh. Yes, Kurt! Let's yeah. Charlie know who did this! Oh, so it'd be so terrifying for the Vietnamese. I wish I knew more about this Vietnam War because it would help me understand the movie a little bit better. Are they trying to help him? Oh my gosh. Hey man, brave enough to why would his guts strapped on to drink with my canteen any day? That was like absolutely horrific, that poor man. Not to meet you, Lance. I've been buying your nose riding for years. <laughs> oh, Oh, I don't like that. The more they tried to make it just like home, the more they made everybody miss it. We have a lot of stuff from America here that was like imported in for them. What happened to your mission, Captain? Trying to forget all about you. <laughs> well, that village you're pointing at is kind of hairy, Willard. I lost a few recon ships in there now and again. Mike, you know anything about this point at Vindin Drop? It's unbelievable. It's just Tube City. <laughs> Now we'll pick your boat up and put it down like a baby right where you want it. Charlie, don't surf! It's wild watching Band of Brothers when they have no food, no ammo, no nothing. Try and hold the line and then now they're in Vietnam and they have like all this food and beer. But 
different time, different war that's going on. <laughs> I really can't wait to watch more Robert Duvall stuff because just watching him compared to The Godfather, his characters are completely different. It's just really amazing watching him. Yeah, he's completely transformed. This. There's all these really interesting blended shots of him thinking with the choppers like overlaid over top of him and like at the beginning and stuff. Extremely artistic. It's a really interesting way to tell a story. But I'm so interested in what he's thinking and feeling. He just looks so empty. Yeah, I use blood to scare the hell out of the slope. Oh my god. How come all you guys sit on your helmet? I'll get a ball blown off. <laughs> oh, thought about it for a sec. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it because they're getting shot up at? Like it loud. Putting it on blast. Has his hand on the missile. Oh, it's really, really cool shots. Definitely need surround sound for that scene. Oh, the sound of choppers in this movie is just, I don't know, it's just so haunting to me. And now seeing it overlaid with the children. It's like a siren to run. Yeah, a big machine gun down there. Yeah, <gasps> I bet you will. I wonder how much money this movie cost back in 1979 to make. This is crazy. Like, it's so much explosions. There's so many helicopters. It is making me want to rewatch Tropic Thunder, though. <laughs> all the explosions in that movie. Maybe not the right thing to think right now. <gasps> no. Whoa, what are they driving on? Whoa. Helicopter pilots though, I think are just absolute unbelievable people. It's just, I feel like it's so hard to fly a helicopter. Oh yes, you are. That's why you need scissors so you can check the wound. Oh my gosh! Shit Holy shit! Oh my gosh! That guy's on fire! Oh my gosh! What do you think? Wow, it's really exciting, man. No, no, the way! Uh. Put six foot square! I can only laugh. Death from above. What that helicopter is named? <laughs> it's like not phase. I want to see how bad of that stuff is going to change. Because you either serve or fight. Time doesn't come in for six hours. Great camera work there. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> He's a crazy motherfucker, this guy. I believe it's gonna be a big one. Whoa. <gasps> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. That's where that quote's from. Smells like victory. <gasps> Someday this war's gonna end. It's really interesting seeing all the different psyches of all these different soldiers, all their different viewpoints on war, life, everything. Someday this war's gonna end. That'd be just fine with the boys on the boat. They weren't looking for anything more than a way home. You're forever changed. It'd be so hard to go back home. You just have such a different worldview and your PTSD it just would 
change you forever, unlike anything. It wasn't just insanity and murder. There was enough of that to go around for everyone. Just like, don't get lost in the deep jungle. Does he really hear something out there? Because it sounded like tree branches snapping. The sound, it's so piercing in like such a quiet and subtle way. It's so scary. It's a fucking tiger? Right, land, up front. Oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah, my god. <laughs> Never get out of the boat. It's just like shooting at it. <laughs> I didn't come here for this shit. Oh yeah, he was wrapped up tight, too tight for this poor guy. I just want to learn to fucking oh, man. buddy. God, what a scare. I mean, it just is kind of funny seeing it, but it's really not funny when that's what they're dealing with, right? The emotional state of them. Never guy. get out of the boat. Absolutely goddamn right. Absolutely goddamn Unless right. you were going all the way. <gasps> like what he's doing. Oh man, poor buddy. Yeah, just wound up so tight and just he's just jolted into like the actual true reality. What did he see here that first tour? And he's trying to dive deep into his psyche. And the more I read and began to understand, the more I admired him. He's really trying to understand Kurtz, isn't he? I almost got eaten alive by a fucking tiger. You almost did. Kurt staged Operation Archangel with combined local forces. <laughs> what balls. The bullshit piled up so fast in Vietnam you needed wings to stay above it. Wonder if they did the old Vaseline spray bottle technique on him to get that sweat effect. Because it looks really good on camera. It looks pretty amazing. Expecting us this time? Damn if I know. This does look wild in the middle of nowhere here. It almost feels like you're in some sort of carnival. Destination's classified. I carry priority papers from Comsec Intelligence Team Corps. Just give him some fuel. I'm really sorry about tonight. It's uh, really bad around here. Yeah, it looked like they were, it was like a stadium that they were setting up over there with all the lights. On a house. No hard feelings, huh? Qui-Gons be bygones. I wonder in the Vietnam War if all you heard were helicopters in the distance over top of you. Like, I wonder if that's all you ever heard. Whoa. Miss August, Miss Keep the spirits high with a good show. Yeah, this has to be a really good soundtrack. It'd be pretty exciting to get a little show like this if you were at war. Grease my god. Oh! I sure do! Oh, when you're at war, things are probably just like so heightened. You're like aroused. The levels are probably so high. Uh oh. It's like a little too excited, boys. Shit, that went sideways really, really fast. Oh. Oh my gosh. Gosh, the arousal level, the stress, like the psychological effects of war, the pressures, everything, like not wanting to be there, the sexualism of everything that was going on there. Oh, everyone's just wound up and just got out of hand. He had only two ways home, death or victory. Ooh, that's a statement. No wonder Kurtz put a weed up command's ass. The war was being run by a bunch of four-star clowns. Is that you, Lozano? Whoa, this is a dangerous game of chicken. This is wild. Um, can they not put that out? That could potentially get super annoying. <laughs> Kurtz orders assassination of three Vietnamese men and one woman. Enemy activity in his old sector dropped off to nothing. Guess he must have hit the right four people. Must have. The army tried one last time to bring him back into the fold. And if he'd pulled over, it all would have been forgotten. He's really pouring over each detail and they called me in man like a god he and his men were playing hit and run all the way into cambodia how long has that kid been on his boat seven months he's really specializing in busting my balls <laughs> my order say i'm not supposed to know where i'm taking this boat so i don't but one look at you and i know it's gonna be hot wherever it is oh he knows he's up to something 
deep. We're going up river about 75 clicks above the Dolong Bridge. That's Cambodia, Captain. That's classified. Yeah, he's gonna go in on his own. But my question is, how do you get back out if you survive? I guess you don't worry about that until your mission is accomplished and you just figure it out. You're not supposed to get off the boat, but he's gonna get off the boat. I've been officially accused of murder by the army. I just wonder what his realization of Kurtz is gonna be, especially when he comes face to face with him, if he does. Seeing clearly what there is to be done and doing it directly, awake. I am beyond their timid lying morality. And so I am beyond a caring. This is a really long trip upriver on a boat with all these guys. Jack, it off. Give him a break. What do you think I said? I love him. Laying down the law. Ben, what's with all the green paint? Camouflage. I want you to stay awake up there, man. You got a job to do. Yeah, you gotta be on it so you can spot anybody trying to attack you. <sighs> This silhouette of Kurtz is haunting him. Ben, bring him in. Say, are they in Cambodia now? Well, let's forget their team now and let them go. These boats are running supplies in this delta, Captain. I'm going to take a look. Until we reach your destination, Captain, you just on for the ride. Damn, they're okay. Gordon, Sergeant. There's nothing on it, man. Get on it. All right. <gasps> More coconuts. Right. Oh no. Get out of here. Come on. Get up. Ah! She is. Look in that tin can. That rusty can. This fucking rice is that all. It ain't nothing. What? Oh my god, why? Is everyone just like going mad? Weren't they just like a little innocent family? See what she's running for! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they better not fucking kill this dog! Oh. Come on, clean goddammit! How are you gonna raise a puppy on a boat? <laughs> Bring her up to She's breathing, Chef. She's hurt. Yeah, and all her family's dead because you guys fucking killed them. The book says Captain. Ah. What? Fuck him. Fuck him. I told you not to stop. No. Holy f It's very stressful. That scene. Oh man, that scene was really hard. Talk about an emotional support animal. There you go, right there. They all need this little buddy. There's no cruelty to animals in this movie, is there? Please, please, please don't. I, oh, oh my god craziness and the madness and levels of war that like we don't know and we can only imagine oh that scene really it's really hitting me viscerally in a really fucked up way i i've been watching a lot of shit man but that uh, i don't know living with ourselves we cut him in half with a machine gun and give him a band-aid Oh, yeah. Those boys were never going to look at me the same way again. Yeah, no, they won't. Like, I knew one or two things about Kurtz that weren't in the dossier. That's what I'm saying. Like, he relates to him. The last army outpost on the Nung River. Beyond it, there was only Kurtz. Oof. I sometimes have a little bit of confusion because I don't know a lot about the Vietnam War, so I'm just trying to take this ride up the river with them. Huh? I mean, what's, what's the matter with you? The, the puppy. Oh, look at him. Good job, this. <gasps> Bar out. Are they all just on drugs? Oh my God, everybody wants to leave. Nobody wants to be there. I am so horrified at all of these images. Now I can get out of here if I can find a way. They're all just stuck there. The asshole of the world, Captain. That doesn't sound good. I gotta find somebody. I need some information. Pick me up the other side of the bridge. This movie is so haunting in such a different way than like any type of horror movie. It sounds like carnival music, like they're in a fun house. It's like everything about this feels so wrong, so absurd. Oh, he still has the puppy with him? This puppy like is the cutest freaking thing I've ever seen and it's insane seeing the puppies 
innocence in all of this of madness and absurdity. He's real close. It seems like he's been out there for a long time with his necklace he made and how he's painted his rifle. Or is this a flare gun? <laughs> Do you know who's in command here? Yeah. I was like, is he? <laughs> this lighting of the light in back into the darkness on their faces. It's almost like they're coming in and out of the darkness back into reality. Did you find the CO captain? There's no fucking CO here. The men are just stuck there, holding the line there at the last outpost with no leader. Do you want to go on? Like this bridge, we build it every night. Charlie blows it right back up again. He's too intrigued about Kurtz. He, he wouldn't be able to let it go. He has to keep going. Let's go! <sighs> I'm feeling really quite anxious and nervous because it looks like we're most likely going into the third act and I don't know how everything's going to unfold. Oh, the puppy. Far out, man. All right, I've been waiting for this one. Yeah, I'm sure that puppy symbolizes their youth their innocence, so many things. There has been a new development regarding your mission, which we must now communicate to you. Months ago, a man was ordered on a mission which was identical to yours. We have reason to believe that he is now operating with Colonel Kurtz. What? Sell the house, sell the car, sell the kids, find someone else, forget it. I'm never coming back, forget it. Oh, is he, Kurtz just able to turn him over to the dark side? He's got the power. I'm worried that this is gonna happen to him. Hey, it's a symbol of protest. That's oh, really man. weird, ain't it? Everything just scares me when there's like a bomb sound going off. I just get jolted. <laughs> oh, wow, because they had the tech, they were able to send little tapes over to each other so they could hear their voice, it's like a message. Oh my gosh. They're just getting swarmed. I don't think he survived that. Oh, geez. This, this is. Where's the dog? The freaking dog. I forgot about the dog and all that mayhem. Hey, Bubba! Bubba, you can't die! No. He was just listening to his message from his family. This is so psychologically disturbing. But don't tell him. As a viewer, and just to imagine their point of view of it. Stay out of the way of the bullets. Bring your honey home. <sighs> oh, stay out of the way of the bullets. That's just absolutely so sad and horrific and just such a sad imagery. Oh my gosh. And where's the dog? Did the dog get killed? Oh. Well, they've been together for so long. He said he'd been on the boat for seven months, plus however long this has taken them. So, you know, you grow close, even though you probably feel like you're going crazy. So much death and sadness on this river, literally going into the fog of war. That one looks like it's been there for a little bit. Like they don't even know where they are. They can't see anything. That's probably how they feel on the inside. This is some amazing cinematography. This is... Captain, I'm stopping this boat. I ain't risking no more lives. I'm in command here, goddammit. You do what I say. That guy was wearing all the necklaces from all those little horns or whatever is on those posts. He was real close. I couldn't see him yet, but I could feel him. I'm still hung up on the dog. I can't believe it. He put, oh my. You got us in this mess, and now you can't get us out because you don't know where the hell you're going, do you? No, he got speared. Oh no, oh, oh my gosh. Spear. 
He was so good. How interesting to get killed with a spear and not a gun wound, right? Or gunshot or bomb. <gasps> oh my gosh. This movie is absolute madness. So dark. Oh. My mission is to make it up into Cambodia. There's a Green Beret colonel up there who's gone insane. That's fucking typical. I'm short and we gotta go up there so you can kill one of our own guys. I love how raw this guy is, chef. Oh, giving him like a water burial. Ooh. Those look like crosses and candles overlap together. Looks like some morbid cemetery. Oh, it is like some sort of cemetery with all those skulls or have some sort of shrine. Much stronger than fear was the desire to confront him. The crazy thing about this movie is I feel so fucked up watching this and I can't even imagine the actors playing this role. Francis Ford Coppola's like mental state, their mental state, and you feel like you're the character. You feel like you're one of the lead characters in this. Like I'm feeling so distraught and dysfunctional and scared. And <laughs> this is a wild, wild trip. I don't think I've ever been on quite a trip like this from watching a movie in my life. It's quite disturbing. <laughs> And I'm sure there's so many more meanings to this. You know, I don't know a lot about the war. And it's like, yeah, and they're entering Cambodia. What is going to happen? Is he going to get like converted into this like religion maybe that Kurtz has started? This cult, this way of life? Um, uh, uh what? Uh, has he become the leader of like the indigenous people of Cambodia? There is some epic cinematography in this movie. Oh, they're letting them, them through. Maybe because Kurtz know that they're just probably going to keep sending people on missions to get him. And he's able to convert the other guy. So, of course, he'll be able to convert these guys. See the world how he sees it. Because he knows. He knows the truth. Wow. Other ways of life other than our modern world. Which is interesting about this. Because it's like the westernism going into Vietnam. <laughs> And watch out, those goddamn monkeys bite you, I'll tell you. <gasps> oh, that guy's hanging there. Oh. I'm an American! An American civilian. <laughs> it looks like he's hung some Americans behind them. I'm a photo journalist. I was gonna say, it looks like a journalist. Who are all these people? These are all his children, man, as far as you can see. Could we uh, talk to Colonel Kirk? You don't talk to the Colonel a uh, lot. Well, you listen to him. The man's enlarged my mind, and he'll say, do you know that if is a middle word in life? I'm a little man. He's, he's a great man. Stay uh, with the book. They don't go without me, okay? Oh. All the philosophical points that he probably makes would probably provoke you like crazy. So if you've seen other things and had different experiences in life, you would probably be interested in that, right? You'd probably be very philosophical. He said, if uh, you take my picture again, I'm going to kill you. Oh. See, just lay cool. But uh, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't judge a girl. You feel the vibe of this place. The vibe is scary and hostile, and I'm worried because there's like a lot of dead Americans and Cambodians or Vietnamese like lying around. So it's like, what is he trying to impose? You're looking at the heads. Sometimes he goes too far. You know. Literally, the heads of people he's beheaded. No. You gonna call him crazy? Fucking A. I just want to talk. To him. He's gone away. He disappeared out in the jungle with his people. I'll wait he for feels him. That's the question. Has he gone crazy? The music. It's so unsettling. Colonel guy, he, he's wacko, man. Help you. Fucking A, I'll help you. I'll do anything to get out of this joint. Apocalypse now, written on the wall. If I die in an evil place, then my soul wouldn't be able to make it down. I'm gonna need you to wait here, Chef. See if I can find the Colonel. If I don't get back by 2200 hours, you'll call in the airstrike. Everything I saw told me that Kurtz had gone insane. Yeah, with like the altars and stuff and the beheadings. Yeah. If I was still alive, it was because he wanted me that way. Whoa. It smelled like slow death in there. 
It's like he was falling into the darkness as they, like, turned the camera around like that. This was the end of the river, all right. Where are you from, Willard? <gasps> oh, my gosh, it's here. How far are you from the river? The Ohio River, sir. The freaking lighting. We haven't even seen his face yet. I went down that river once when I was a kid. It looks like an eclipse. Have you ever considered any real freedoms? Freedoms in the opinion of others, even the opinions of yourself. So philosophical. They say why. I'm smiling because the camera and lighting work is unbelievable. I was sent on a classified mission, sir. It's like we're looking into his brain and his thoughts. I don't see any method at all. It's like he's halfway in the darkness. One foot in, one foot out. What did you expect? Are you an assassin? I'm a soldier. Oh. You're neither. You're an errand boy. Sent by grocery clerks. What epic cinematography and lighting that was. I cannot wait to look up what this one after. I'm trying to remember who what actor this is. Is this Dennis Hooper? I'm not, I'm actually, I don't know. I'm going to have to look it up after. Does he kill anyone that disobeys him? What does he do? Oh, he's a prisoner now. That's how he converts them, tortures them. Tortures in a psychological way to break them. He's got something in mind for you. Aren't you curious about that? I'm pretty curious. Use him as an errand boy the other way. <laughs> the man is clear in his mind, but his soul is mad. He's dying, I think. He hates all of this. They're gonna say he was a kind man. He had plans, he had wisdom. Bullshit, man. What brilliant acting. Wow. What a monologue. Almost eight hours. Is he have plans for him to be the next leader? I don't know if he's going to be able to turn them that quickly. Because doesn't he have the 2200 hours call it in for the airstrike? Unless he doesn't stay on the boat. Stay on the boat. Don't get off the boat. Horrifying. He painted his face like the other guy. I have oh, You're stuck out here now all by yourself. <sighs> These overlaying shots this whole movie have been I find quite brilliant. The transitions are pretty epic. I honestly had no reaction to that because it's almost like I'm not surprised and it's so horrific that it's like you're You've, you've almost become numb to it. And I feel numb is an interesting word to use for parts of this movie. Maybe how soldiers in this war or in war could potentially feel. This is like such a different level of psychological abuse and torture. Is he gonna be strong enough to withstand it? Is he gonna fake it? Is he gonna stay strong and pretend to go along with it? To outsmart Kurtz? <sighs> The shots in this are killing me. They're absolutely brilliant. So artistic, so moving. Capture Kurtz's Kurtzness in such a way that c can only be captured as him. You know what I mean? Like this is, obviously I've just watched The Godfather and I've, I've seen the cinematography and the lighting and stuff that they've done, but this is, I don't think I've ever seen a character like portrayed like this and not a lot of dialogue so far. There's only love and hate. You either love somebody or you hate them. Mark. This is the way the fucking world ends. Look at this fucking shit we're in, man. I mean, LSD and stuff in like the late 60s and 70s would have been an interesting time and really would have opened your psyche and been transformative and maybe lead you down more conspiratorial or philosophical paths and thoughts. On the river, I thought that the minute I looked at him, I'd know what to do, but it didn't happen. I was in there with him for days. He knew more about what I was going to do than I did. All his medals. If the generals back in the train could see what I saw, 
Would they still want me to kill him? More than ever, probably. I'd never seen a man so broken up. But you have no right to call me a murderer. You have a right to kill me. But you have no right to judge me. I'm weighing those in my thoughts. I'm weighing that, that statement. To describe to those who do not know what horror means. And you must make a friend of horror and moral terror by your friends. Then they are enemies to be feared. This movie needs to be watched many times to let it all sink in. When I was with special forces, we went into a camp to inoculate. And they had come and hacked off every inoculated arm. So they didn't get vaccinated. I cried. I wept like... I would think so. That'd be so horrifying. And I thought, my God, the genius of that. The will to do that. Perfect. They were stronger than we. The strength to do that. Whew. You have to have men who are moral, primordial instincts to kill without feeling, without judgment. Because it's judgment that defeats us. It's so heinous to chop off those little children's arms, though. If I were to be killed, I would want someone to go to my home and tell my son everything. Oh, are they going to sacrifice it? There's a lot of deep meaning and philosophical <sighs> nuances in that, that I definitely will have to read over that monologue again and, and just think deeper on it. It's a lot to absorb and to completely comprehend and I think a first time watch because it's so easy to call him crazy and like this and that. But yeah, should we judge people if their beliefs are different? Oh, this guy is still alive. But it's like if they're doing wrong and killing people like what Hitler was doing, like, yeah, you got to take a stand. They were going to make me a major for this and I wasn't even in their fucking army anymore. He just wanted to go out like a soldier, not like some poor, wasted, rag-assed renegade. Whoa. What? Whoa. <sighs> but their commanders. Oh, no. Um. Um, honestly, like if, if that's a real cow, like this is, it's just too much for me that they did that on camera. PETA is probably real mad. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. I think that's what. We were meant to witness the horror because I am horrified. The movie is a metaphor for horror, metaphor for madness and darkness, madness of war. Our minds is trying not to, to barf. I'm really trying not to barf. What have you become now? Was he writing some sort of book? Drop the bomb, exterminate them all. Is he coming out as the new leader? I really, really hope not. Did he shave his head? Oh, they're all bowing to him. Or is his hair just slicked back? No, I have so many thoughts going through my mind. This is so insane. What? No. How do you go into the world and be a normal person after all of this? <laughs> oh, everyone else is putting down their weapons. I take him by the hand. Let's get out of here. <gasps> yeah, he's getting out of there. I was a little bit scared for a minute. How's this going to impact him, though? Oh, he's covered from all the cow's blood. It's like he's waking up with that rain dropping on him. The horror within us. Oh, his eye is like on the eye of the statue. Oh, the sound of the rain. <sighs> that movie's, it's absolute insanity. That movie is absolute insanity. 
I feel physically ill after watching this. I am absolutely ill because of the brilliance and the horror of this movie. It's so deep. It's so deeply philosophical. There's so much meaning and all these undertones of madness of war and the psychological effects of war. I am absolutely in awe of the filmmaking of this. Also a little bit upset with some things like animal killing that doesn't necessarily need to be shown on film, but that's me. I just have a hard time with it, but it shows the horror. <laughs> I understand. There is such a conflict of morals in this. I felt like it was so conflicting from the beginning, from Willard's perspective, and then seeing Kurtz, all these ethical dilemmas, and like Kurtz was killing all these innocent people, the war, they're killing innocent people. It is so complex and so conflicting, and what that does to our psyche and our thoughts, it is so challenging because the whole theme of morality is such a subjective thing. Is it right or is it wrong? <laughs> It is a hard thing to grapple with in your mind. I guess the meaning of morality really depends on your philosophical and cultural upbringing and your perspectives. Seeing Marlon Brando as Kurtz was, was absolutely horrific, scary imagery that I will never forget. Such a powerful performance by everybody in this movie, but Marlon Brando to have such amazing charisma and a powerhouse of talent on screen that you can capture that with little to no words and then when he speaks it's it's like you're listening to, to like you're listening to this amazing individual who's just able to transform himself i cannot wait to watch more of his movies and dennis hooper what a great supporting role in the, the, the just the last act of that movie i thought his performance was almost the heartbeat of the <laughs> movie. I don't know why I'm compelled to say that. There was just something he brought to the film that was so different and he was so rich and so truthful in his monologues and you just believed him and he just brought this other sense to the to the movie. I don't know. I don't know why I felt that to be so powerful. So yeah, horror. Do you do you have to face your own horror and your own morality and your own enemies within the dark and the light within you? Oh my gosh, it's like so deep and and yeah, it provokes such a philosophical topic and questions and things. It's just things to think about, right? If you like philosophy, this is a great movie. If you, you know, want to think a little bit more, you know, there's so much meaning behind this movie. It's definitely something that needs to be rewatched, I think, to let it also sink in and to ask yourself more of those questions. Yeah, I felt like I was going to barf by the end of that movie and I had a really hard time and I, I probably won't be able to watch this or the final cut for a while because I, I, on I honestly like need a break from that because Oh my God, that movie hit me on such a visceral level. Sometimes my body is just able to like feel it and understand it more than my, you know, my critical thinking brain or my thinking brain. This is like a crazy look into like a journey, a path that one can take, you know, from Kurtz's side, from Willard's side. War is so dark, it's hell. And you go into this darkness and you turn into someone that is so unrecognizable and that's why I wasn't sure what was going to happen to Willard at the end because he was so unrecognizable by the end he you know with the mud on his face and he was like in the water it's almost like he like came out of the water at the end and like into some sort of realization and rebirth because I wasn't sure what he was going to do at the end if he was actually going to kill him or not you feel like you're there like you feel so disoriented you feel so taken out of reality and you definitely felt like you went on that journey with these men and these characters. I've never really felt like that watching a movie before. Like I felt like I was on this crazy trip and 
I don't know if I have ever experienced anything like that. Those are some things that I'm just like picking up after like a first time watch. I wish that puppy survived. That was just so horrible. <laughs> but I, I guess now thinking about it is like the dog dying or if it didn't die or them losing the dog is like a loss of their innocence. So it's like, you know, it's hitting me. I was just, I get too caught up with like the animals dying cause I'm sensitive like that. <laughs> I rate this movie like quite high, like 96, 97%. It's just like they don't make movies like this. And I definitely like this more than Bram Stoker's. Completely different. But it's really cool to see Francis Ford Coppola's work. The cinematography was done by Vittario Storaro. It's pretty amazing. Oh my God, he did Dick Tracy. That's like one of my favorite movies ever from a kid that I haven't seen since probably 1990. Okay, so I'm looking up the slaughtering of the, the cow. So they did they slaughter a cow in Apocalypse Now? It really happened. The animal, a water buffalo, was killed, but not for the film. The tribe in the film was a real indigenous tribe that lived in the area and they had already decided to slaughter it. Coppola merely decided to film the event. Okay, that's really interesting. Ooh, Robert Duvall won for Apocalypse Now. He was pretty phenomenal. And I love just seeing the diversity of his characters just from watching The Godfather and then this. Oh my God, that was crazy. I'm inspired by a lot of this acting and a lot of this filmmaking because I am, I'm just, I just absolutely love it. Like. I'm, I'm sitting here grinning at certain scenes and the way they shot it. And I'm like, oh, maybe you shouldn't be smiling in that part. Cause it's like, maybe not the right time to smile, but I can't help but not smile. Cause I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like it's just when you see certain comedians or certain people doing their art and you're just like, you are such an artist. And to like paint this on film, on celluloid, you know what I mean? Like to take a story and do that, it is, absolutely amazing. This movie put me in a trance. Thank you so much for watching with me. I am excited for the comments to pour in. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this over and over. A lot of people on my Patreon have said that they have seen this movie like 50 times plus. And so I'm excited to hear what you have to say and just to open my mind up a little bit more to things I may have missed. That was such a crazy ride up the river that I will never forget. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys love movies, don't forget to hit that sub button. Do me a favor and hit that like. It really helps my channel grow and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all and I will see you in the next reaction video. Ciao. RIP, water buffalo. That was really fucking sad. <laughs>